Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Praise the Lord. We are so grateful that Christ is sufficient for all seasons of life and our contentment is not from our circumstances or our feelings. Our contentment is in Christ. In Christ we live and move and have our being. Moen and I send our love greetings to you. And we are standing with you through all the seasons of your life that you are going through. And we are not condemning you. We are not ministering a word of condemnation to you. Because there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And we praise God for that in Jesus' name. Now, family, Jesus said that in the world you will have trouble. In the world you will have trouble. In John 16, verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Praise God for the reading of his word. This is a powerful promise from God. First of all, you are not a citizen of this world. You are a citizen of heaven. But you are sent by God at this particular time to live in this world. You are in this world, but you're not of this world. And Jesus says, first of all, here, that in this world you will have trouble. You see, friends, trouble comes to all of us. Tribulation comes to every one of us. There is no Christian on the face of this earth. And even Jesus went through trouble. So our Christianity, our gospel, Jesus Christ's life is sufficient for all to live victoriously even if you're in trouble, even if you're being attacked by the devil, even though for a season you may be in shortage, even though for a season you may be going through an attack of sickness and disease. Whatever you're going through, Jesus is more than enough while you're going through that. But you are going through that, you're not feeding that meter. If you're going through a hellish attack, don't feed that meter. You keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, even in the time of discouragement even in the time of sickness and disease, even in the time when people forsake you, loved ones can forsake you, God will not, will not forsake you. Even through everything, even if you go through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, it's not strange that in the world you'll have trouble. That's the point I'm trying to let you know, that Jesus himself, went through trouble. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, in the night Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread, he gave his disciples communion. And so, even in the time of betrayal, even in the time when people can stab you in the back, even in the time when people want to take you out, even in the time when people want to pull the carpet from under your feet, even if the, in a time when people are planning malicious damage to your property, to your life, to your family, God wants you to know that in the world you will have these things. But he does say he's spoken to us that in him we'll have peace. In him. Can you see that? These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. And the word peace is wholeness, is completeness, 
It means shalom. It's from the word shalom. It means nothing missing, nothing broken. So Jesus wants you to know that even though you're going through stuff, but in you, there's nothing missing, nothing broken. You are complete. You are whole. That means there's a storm on the outside, but the storm is not getting in you. It's not shattering you. It's not breaking you up into pieces. It's not destroying you that you're going to walk on this water. You're going to ride through the storm. You're going to go through because Jesus is in your boat. And greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. And Jesus has overcome the world. That's why he says here, in me you will have peace. You'll have shalom. In the world, you'll have trouble. It's almost like a paradox. You are in Jesus, but you're in the world. By virtue of the fact that you are in Jesus, and Jesus is in you, in you, you have completeness. He's the head of all principality and power, and you are complete in him. But while you are in him, and he is in you. You are in this world as an ambassador for Christ. You are in this world as a soldier. And he says, in this world, you'll have trouble. <laughs> in this world, you ha will have tribulation. So please see the picture that by the Spirit of God, I'm painting in your mind and your heart. In Jesus, you have completeness. But while you are in Jesus and Jesus is in you, you are in this world. And in this world, you have trouble. So you've got trouble, but you have completeness because you are in Jesus. You have peace. You have divine prosperity within you. You have completeness within you. You have nothing missing, nothing broken within you, and you'll go through the trouble. So there's a big difference when you have trouble and don't have peace. When you have trouble and you don't have completeness. So we're not so focused on the trouble while we are aware of it. In this world you'll have tribulation. But we are focused on the completeness that we have in Christ Jesus. Then he says an amazing statement. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In other words, be content, be joyful, serve the Lord with gladness. Why? Because Jesus Christ overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil. He overcame the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The first Adam didn't overcome it. The last Adam, Jesus, overcame it. And he's in us to make us more than conquerors. Now, as I draw this to a close, listen to what the Apostle Paul said about the life of faith. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, he's speaking about us having the spirit of faith in the middle of the trouble, because faith worketh by this love. We have this completeness within us. We have this peace of God within us. But in this world, we have trouble. So you have prosperity and trouble at the same time. The difference is the trouble is on the outside. The prosperity is on the inside. Jesus is on the, out, on the inside, and the trouble is on the outside. And so he says, we are troubled on every side. What? That means you turn this side, there's trouble. You turn this side, there's trouble. You look forward, there's trouble. You turn and look at your back, there's trouble. We are troubled on every side. But then he says, yet not distressed. You, you trouble on every side, but you're not distressed. 
You are perplexed. You're perplexed. But you're not in despair. Persecuted? Yes. But you're not forsaken. You're cast down, but you're not destroyed. And he makes a statement, always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Very interesting. This trouble is like working death into the outward man. Because nobody wants trouble. Nobody wants difficulty. But we're in a world that's full of trouble. And so now we bear the death of Jesus, the suffering of Jesus, in the body. Because our bodies are relating to a troubled world. But he goes on to say that the life, we bear about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Look at this. It's like a paradox. There's death working in our body. It's coming from our circumstances, coming from a troubled world. And we identify with Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That's why you bear about in your body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because your circumstances are working death to you. So you don't trust in your own strength. You don't trust in the flesh. But he didn't stay in the tomb. He rose again. And we were born out of death into life. That's why you were born again. And so the life of Christ now quickens our mortal body. So there has to be death for life to come. There has to be death for resurrection to take place. And so you're going to have to look at this. It seems like there's tension between the two, the death and the resurrection. But we have greater understanding that if there wasn't a death, there wouldn't be a resurrection. So both death and resurrection is working in your life. Then he says, for we which live <laughs> are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Oh, so we're understanding how this death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus is working. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. So you see, for us to release the life of God, we go through a process of suffering and death and bad experiences in life. But as you're consistent and you persevere, out of that eater comes something to eat for others. You see, when people see you prospering, and of course they will be encouraged. But I tell you, friends, also when people see you suffering and Christ is sufficient for you in your difficulty and sufferings, people also get encouraged because they're going through some stuff. People don't talk to others about what they're going through most of the time unless they got confidence in you. And when they see you live victoriously in Christ on the mountaintops of life, and the valleys of life, he still prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. So death works in you, but those that see you, life works in them, but life in you. Then he says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. So the spirit of faith is believing and speaking. That's the spirit of faith. 
Now, when death is working in you, you believe that life, resurrection life, is also working in your mortal body. You believe that and you speak that because you're not believing that this death that's working in your mortal body is going to annihilate you, is going to defeat you, is going to take you out. No, no, a million times no. It's real. Death is working in your mortal body, but you have a spirit of faith within you, and the spirit of faith believes that life will work in this death situation. The spirit of faith speaks life into this situation. So your life of faith from the spirit of faith is not allowing the trouble in the world to define who you are. The spirit of faith defines who you are. And you have that spirit of faith. It's a spirit of Jesus Christ. It's a spirit of the life of the word of God. It is a faith of God. It's a faith of Jesus. It's apostolic faith. It's a lifestyle of the believer. And that spirit of faith is believing in the midst of death that life of resurrection is working in you. God richly, richly bless you. I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging you. You're going through a wonderful weekend in the spirit of the faith of Jesus Christ. God richly bless you. You are coming through, shining like a rose. You are coming through victoriously and you are a aroma of God of life unto life for others. God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for all our online viewers. I thank you, God, in the midst of death working in us. The, the death of Jesus is working in us because our circumstances are teaching us as well that we have an experience of God in the midst of death situation, we have an experience of God that death is defeated, that Jesus has the keys of death and hell, and Jesus has a final say in our life. Therefore, we yield to the spirit of faith to believe in the resurrection power of Jesus and to speak the resurrection power of Jesus and I join my faith with my precious family of God wherever you are across this globe in whatever you are going through. I join my faith and we believe that he that raised Jesus from the dead is quickening you right there in your difficulty and you are rising up as more than a conqueror through the spirit of faith. And I release the spirit of faith to work powerfully in your life in Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. God richly bless your family. I'll see you Sunday morning. Don't miss our morning services and the evening services. We're beginning a fast. We're in a fast for 40 days. And we're also fasting for you, fasting before God, that God will help you through all your difficulties and your problems. And he'll give you solutions that you never dreamt were possible. But join us on Sunday morning uh, in service and Sunday night. I promise you, you will be blessed. For any reason and you're not able to come, then our Sunday morning and Sunday night is also online for you to experience the life quickening power of a risen and a resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great weekend with your family. Bye bye.